the mc was reading out a very very distinguished and eminent list of artists and at that time after a long spell i did experience a bit of nervousness because this is the same platform i am right now sharing with uh, dr abdul kalam here we are um who wants to bell the cat audience the floor is now open for questions my first national award was a bit of a shock because uh, i wasn't expecting it the i did get the film fair award i did get the state award i did get most of the awards this year but i didn't know that i had been nominated for the national award there was a feeling of disbelief and then after a month there was a feeling of a huge achievement and and when i actually stood before the president it was a very humbling experience you know i i didn't actually i'm not that uh, charitable so i actually thought i should do something that would make me grow as an artist and i felt that through through teaching i could i could do that i had a lot to offer at the age of um, i took on my first student when i was 17 she didn't do too well at the age of 19 i had a couple of students and i realized that there was a lot of creativity in me i had the good fortune of realizing that you know i just didn't i wasn't just meant for films films is a group work so films is this all encompassing um group work where we had to work with at least a minimal of 200 people every every day so while i was doing that for 10 years i realized that there was a little more of me that i had to explore so while i was shooting there was always this boredom in me there was always this calling and i felt that i had to do something for myself which was not just dance which was everything that would make me better as a as a dancer which meant studying which meant reading which meant watching other performers which meant going for a cabaret it's also a style of art so so i decided then to teach and i realized that i had a lot of fun teaching kids and then they liked me so they stuck on and then we and then we grew and grew thank you what is your secret no ma'am no ma'am what is your secret I have no secret ma'am you have no secret okay well i think um beauty for me has never ever been in the way your face is structured beauty has always been in a person's vibe in the way you command attention when you enter a room the way you um, radiate positive vibes for me that is beauty and i think i stay happiness is what reflects in your face so for me the happiness has come from basically doing what i thought i was always meant to do i didn't have a problem in choosing my career i didn't have an, a, a stage in my life when my parents said listen you have to get your mba uh, either you get your mba and then dance or you just get go on so i didn't have to choose i was always doing what i thought i was meant to do and that has made me happy always as well as hanging out with a whole bunch of young and beautiful people thank you the multitudinal experiments which you have done with various artists and musicians okay so how explosive does this get you call me a scientist of bharatanatyam well i was also called a hair stylist I just saw a card so I don't know from 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 where that call so here I am in your college I've been called a actress choreographer a teacher a hair stylist I have collaborated with other people I have that that was always a quirk in me I hated getting into any kind of routine a lot of artists are like that they like to break the pattern all the time there are no rules there are rules when it comes to doing what you have to do but there's always this this uh this very natural tendency not to follow the same path you know there's always a tendency to say hey this you i get bored a lot 
I used to anyway. So then I decided that, okay, films is there. I've done films for 10 years. You know, I've been doing the same roles. Most women do the same roles in Southern films. I've been wearing the same clothes. I've been acting with the same people. I've been directed by the same brain. So I, when I had an idea of what every film was going to offer, even before the film started out, there was a producer who came to me and he started the film in one line and I finished it for him. So that's when I said I had to move on. The same thing happened to me while I was doing my dance. Uh, there was this feeling always to explore and then uh, I started collaborating with artists from other traditions. Wasn't that your question? Collaboration. Yes ma'am. Yes ma'am. Yeah. So then I, I, I had the good fortune of working with uh, the Tabil Maestro, Valaipati Subramanyam. And uh, that really set me thinking because I did it easily. And then I worked with Mandalin Srinivas, and then I worked with Ustad Zakir Hussain, I worked with um, Sri Vikuvan Aikram, Shivamani, and so on and so forth. So while I did that, that was only a part of me, you know. You're, I'm not born to totally keep on creating or experiment. So that was only a part of me which made me get back into tradition uh, with more grit. Tradition is what I've been taught. Tradition is what I teach people. But this exploration, ex explosiveness is only done to get my tradition stronger. What I realized at that point was while working with all these stalwarts, there was one thing they all had in common, which was a lot of humility. So that was a learning experience for me actually. What's the importance of dance in education okay. and how does in education or dance and education? Dance in education okay. and how does it improve one's quality of a person? One's well, quality of a person? Dance in education is not important. I don't, I don't think so. But I think education in dance is very, very important. Because for me, dance is just not a movement of limbs, you know. You need to have a very, very uh, refined brain to make you want to connect with, with people. So it is an ability that makes you connect with any form of art. Especially when it comes to classical art, it is very difficult for somebody to understand classicism. But that doesn't mean that you don't do classicism. That doesn't mean you only do film dance and it doesn't mean you only do folk dance. There is a very strong tradition that you feel that you have to do because you're born to do it and then there is a problem because it is classical and I'm unable to reach out to people. So then you need a very strong education to refine your mind, to plow it into dance and then to take it out so that at least in a hall full of 500 people, at least you have 30 people saying, we, we got that. You look amazing, ma'am, totally. Thank you. Ma'am, uh, You're my... such a liar, yeah. No, no, seriously. <laughs> okay. You look stunning. Thank you. My question is, uh, do you actually believe dance can be deployed to achieve universal peace and all? You know, can you, do you believe dance can heal the world? I don't believe dance can heal the world. I believe that a lack of corruption can heal the world. Then uh, there are people who like, who carry out uh, dance functions and all for peace and all the stuff. There are people who do a whole bunch of stuff for peace. There are people who believe in so many different ideologies. There are people who feel that dance, there are handicapped people who can dance. There are teachers, there are my, my colleagues who teach physically handicapped, mentally handicapped people, so that she feels peace and they have a good time. So there are so many different different kinds of uh, philosophies here. I feel that dance can heal the dancer. So when I am hurt, when I am lonely, when I am distressed, when I am angry, when I am frustrated, when I am fed up, then I just turn to something that I know can tone me down, can calm me down, I just go to my rehearsal hall and I hang out. 
I dance. Thank you, ma'am. Come on. Would you share with us the joy of being a mother? Well, the joy of being a mother is uh, something well that came to me late in life, and I'm and I'm very thankful that it happened finally. It's going home has a different meaning now. Usually, it used to be, oh, I have to go home because I have to sleep. I have to get up the next day. I have a call sheet. People are waiting. People are paying me. But now I'm saying, I have to go home because Narayani is waiting. So, <laughs> so, and also, it opens up a lot more emotions. There is one secret that most artists don't share with you. We always think that the more pain a person has gone through, the better their art becomes. The more interesting, the more well-read you are, the better the art, art becomes. So I feel myself opening up more as a person and I hope that that is also uh, will add to me becoming a better artist. Shobhana the actor and Shobhana the person, or is there just one inspiration that influences your existence? Um, Shobhana the actor, there's nobody. At the, at, the, at the risk of sounding vain, I'm telling you, but it's not vanity at all. It's just an absolute truth. Uh, there has been no inspiration. Shobhana the dancer, there is an inspiration from Dr. Padma Subramanyam. There is an inspiration from my own teacher. Chitra Vishweshwaran. I'm inspired by Bridge Maharaji. I'm inspired by Zakir Hussain. And uh, as a person, that's a tough one because again, you know, I've I've learned my mistakes myself. I've followed my own course. I have uh, tackled life singularly, and God has been kind to me thing is, I can't name anybody that I've been motivated by. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> is that a good thing? Everybody's clapping. I mean, <laughs> okay. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Uh, if not a dancer or an actress, what would we have seen Shobhana as? Um, I would have been a writer, I think. I can paint decently well, I used to. I could have become a musician. I think so. But it's very, very rare, you know. Chances were very, very low at that time. Are men in intimidated? Yes, no. I think that's a question you should be asking a man because no man is going to come up and say, hey man, I'm intimidated by you, you know. <laughs> so, uh, I think it works both ways, you know, I, I wouldn't, I think women are also intimidated by men most of the time um, and I don't much care for cliches like saying that a man doesn't like an intelligent woman or a man doesn't like a strong woman, stuff like that, because there's, every, everybody's different. Mm, that's it. I, I don't have any experience of a man coming and telling me, listen, you better tone it down. I mean, I'm intimidated. So I can't, I can't say much. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Being a dancer, you've seen hundreds of stages. Yeah. So do you think the scenario of the audience has changed from a class who respected art to a class who consider it as a social status? I have only seen the audiences change for the better. Whole bunch of very, very hard-working and committed artists. So there are artists who are doing the classical, there are artists who are trained in classical, who are also ex experimenting and who is giving it to you in little, little doses. And so, and there's so much of knowledge being passed around. So that has, has seeped into the subject of Bharatanatyam also. So I have only seen the audiences grow. Being a guru and what? I'm molding a handful of youth. Molding a what? Handful of youth. Molding a handful of youth. Come with me. I have a student with me. You have to ask her that. I also teach them to develop a bit of self-confidence and I do it all the time. So here we are.
I want to be a dancer and she has made me and she's given me the confidence to take the decision in my life. I was about to, I was into cost accounting and I cleared my foundation. Then I, I thought that uh, I don't, I, I'm not meant to do that and she's everything to me, <laughs> more than a mother. So that's it, I mean, um, the legacy has not come through but what it is is that I understand, I understand kids, I more than their parents, they're very scared of their parents. So I kind of am their friend and when I move on, they'll probably remember me, the legacy is more than a guru they'll remember me as your friend, which, which is what I wanted. Thank you. Ma'am, uh, when you enter the film industry, you would have faced lots of uh, uh, challenges. And how did you overcome all the challenges? When I entered the film industry, I was uh, nine years old. So my, my biggest challenge was I had to get up at three o'clock. And I was doing a role where I had two older sisters. So if I was 9, 1 was 16 and 1 was 22. So if we had to report at the shooting at 7 o'clock, the production would send me the car at 3 because I was the youngest. So I would uh, report at 3 o'clock, then I had to go to the other end of town to pick up the 16-year-old sister and then I had to come back to pick up the 21-year-old. So these kind of things. But while I was did the film as a heroine. There is a lot of, you know, there's a lot of this talk about how actors have challenges and heroines have challenges and how women have problems and issues and stuff like that. Well, I had not much to talk about here. My biggest challenge was the fact that I was not understood. When people have preconceived notions about you, then it becomes tough. Because in my mind, I was there to be creative, to experiment, to do films, to make money, blah, blah, blah. But <laughs> the other people thought that I, I had to share my own personal space, which I didn't understand. They thought that I, I had to be another face, the face that you are face to face is the only face that I have, <laughs> okay? But that was a challenge that I had to understand, that I had to be somebody else on, on camera as well as off. So other than that, there was not much of a challenge. This is the toughest thing because then you don't, you're not allowed to work peacefully. So it was very hyped at that time saying this was a film made by women for women, blah, blah, blah. But I, again, I don't belong to a mole that believed in this. For me, a crew is a crew. Whether it's men or women, it's, it's a unit. So, uh, she went through a lot of trouble to do that film because, you know, we had to go to the US and then it was a small budgeted film. They had a lot of problems. We had a lot of issues and she lost the camera. The camera of the film was actually stolen and it's worth about 50 lakhs. So, so these were the problems we were having and that was a time that I realized that I had to, not to be selfish in the sense not just be an actor but then I started taking care of the production work, I started you know reading the scripts, helping American actors, taking the stress off her, things like that. So that, that was the first time that I was actually getting into film filmmaking. Other than that, it was a very novel experience for me to work in that film. What does that take, uh, foreign dance becoming a popular in India? I love hip-hop. I love, if I can like cabaret, if I can like belly dancing, then why wouldn't I like hip-hop? It's for me, it's a, it's a way of uh, art, it's a way of, of expression. So, um, I think it's become a global village, as you know. I think teenagers are teenagers all over the world, and why would we be different? So if people like, if kids like hip-hop, I like hip-hop. So why, why wouldn't the teenagers like it? So when they like something, they actually bring it here. With all these competitions and uncertainty in uh, arts industry, 
uh, what would you recommend the youngsters uh, to fo solely focus on art or have it just as an option? It's like me saying suddenly I'm bored, I want to become a doctor. I can't do that. No, I can sit and study all my life but I, but I can't do it. So I think the basic thing is you need to be very, very self-aware. If you're very confident that you have the potential and if you are willing to, to take risks, if you're willing to sacrifice, go for it. Because it's like a computer, it's not going to give you anything unless you give it time. Same time, you just can't have talent and say, okay, let me, you know, also have a degree and let me, you know, do this and maybe we'll have time. It's, it is a physical work. It is a phys, so when you're young, only can you do your sadhagama, your exercises. If you're talking about dance. Later on in life, you can't say, I used to have fantastic talent. Let me start honing it at 40 and try to be a dancer. It will not work. So you have to have a very good guru. But more than that, you have to be very, very self-aware and confident. Uh, could you tell a moment which makes you smile whenever you remember it? I am searching for moments like this. I like the smaller moments in life. I have no part in the, in the, in the bigger moments of life. I have no part in applauses. I have, no, I have nothing to cherish in a standing ovation or anything. I liked in the whole of today's interaction, what I, I liked was the fact that, you know, when Manichitra Tara came on and I asked you the question, I saw this whole bunch of people, whether they're from the south, north, about I think 80% of the audience here had actually seen the film. That would always make me smile because I didn't expect that. I expected only the Malayalis to have seen it. So, I, I would always cherish this moment when I go back and I say, it's not a Malayalam film, you know, I've been part of something greater. Things like that. So, this is how I think, you know. Hello, ma'am. Hi. Uh, having trained many classical dancers, which trend would you find to be precious and rare? In the dancer? Precious yeah. and rare in the dancer? Classical dancer. I find the burning desire in some student of mine to dance gives me energy to teach. Then I have, I firmly believe in presence of mind. And I firmly believe in education. So it's not one point. So if I find the three qualities in a, in a dancer, I know that I can do something with that child. 